Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Sage One Accounting webinar. The topic that will be handled in this webinar is getting started. Just some formalities. Everyone is muted so that there are no interruptions and then I can be heard clearly. Please feel free to address any questions in your question box. First and utmost, I would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend today's webinar. My name is Tazneem and I will be taking you through. On the home page of the Sage One website, the demo company is available to you to be viewed and transacted into to see the effects of the transactions before adding them to your company. The 30-day free trial can later be converted to a full package. Once your sign-up process has been completed and you have activated the link that was sent to the email, you are now ready to access and set up your company. Once you've logged in to your Sage One Accounting, company. Your company settings is available to you under your banner bar. Alternatively, under your main menu, company, change company settings. The following window will appear. Your company details allows you to add essential addresses that were not added in the initial registration process. You also have the option to add alternate emails that can be used for communication and an alternate email if you wish to have another email address cc'd on communication. Please ensure that the correct checkboxes are checked. Statutory information. You have your company tax number, registered name, registration number, tax office and an entity type that needs to be selected from the drop down box. Under your customer zones, you would need to enable your Sage One customer zones by checking the checkbox. This option allows your customers to view their invoices and make payments online by clicking on a link that will be sent to their email. You have the choice to allow your customers to view invoices and quotes only or invoices and account history. Your online payments Sage Pay allows your Sage One account to accept credit cards so that your customers can pay you online. You get paid faster and will, all the transactions will automatically be reconciled the next time you import your bank statement. Activate this option by checking on the checkbox with the necessary information. Alternatively, if you would like a Sage Pay consultant to call you, click on the following link. Under your general setting options, we have financial years. Zoom into the date to select a start as well as the end of your financial year date. Once you have done so, you can add financial years by adding a line below. Please ensure that the correct current financial year is checked with the appropriate checkbox in order for transacting to fall within the correct financial year. At the end of your financial year, if you wish to set a lockdown date, you may do so to enable that no user is allowed to transact or process or edit any information up to and including the date that has been set. Your rounding option, we have the option to not round, round up, down or normal rounding to a particular number. In your regional settings, if you need to add decimal places with regards to quantities, you would do so within this window. We also have value decimal places currency symbols and your date format which can be selected from the drop down box. In your customer supplier and item settings, by checking the check boxes a warning will appear when a duplicate supplier or customer reference is used. You also have the option to allow inactive customers, suppliers or items to be displayed on processing screens by checking the appropriate check boxes. You may have a customer that is in excess of his credit limit and therefore marked him as inactive. However, he wished to do business with you on a cash basis. If this option is not selected, the customer will not appear on the processing screens. Check the boxes if you wish to have a warning when item quantities fall below zero, when item cost is zero, or when your item selling price is below your cost price. In your outstanding balances, Check the checkbox for monthly based aging or leave unchecked for day based aging. Under our VAT settings, we have invoice based, payment based and no VAT at all. Invoice based is VAT that is generated every time an invoice is gener generated, whereas payment based is VAT generated every time a payment is generated. 
please ensure that the vet, your VAT number is included in the following box and also your VAT period and submission dates are accurately inserted. This will affect VAT reporting within your company. So for example, if you were to be reporting VAT January and February to report in March, your VAT period end date would be February and your submission date would be March. Please also ensure that your VAT reporting frequency is set to two periods. You may add VAT types by adding lines below, adding a VAT name as well as a percentage. In your document and statements option, you have statement messages. When you print statements, each statement shows the customer's outstanding balance. You can also include a message on the statement depending on the customer's overdue status. Document numbers, you would need to create sequential numbers falling from your old accounting system in order for Sage One Accounting to flow through. In your document descriptions, if you wish to change the name of any of your documents, you may do so. Under your customer document messages and supplier document messages, we have message boxes that will appear on the appropriate documents. In your invoice and statement layouts, we have a default and cl classic layout that's available to you. However, if you wish to edit this layout, you may do so by downloading the Sage One Report Designer by clicking here. If, however, you wish to only add a company logo, please load it under the company logo. Choose a file by browsing into your picture folder. Your logo would need to be saved in a picture format being a .jpg, .tiff, GIF, PNG or bitmap. Ensure that you've selected as to whether you would like it top left or top right. And once you have done so, click on your save before you can preview your logo being saved. Under your user defined fields, we have customer, supplier, item, and asset user defined fields. Your user defined fields are extra information fields that will appear on your master files in order for you to add extra information per master file. Under your email signatures, we have signatures that have been created by default. However, in a multi user environment, you may have to add signatures to enable. A individual signature per user. Click on the Add Signature link and you may add signatures once you have done so. Manage your signatures and activate per user for the appropriate document from the drop down box. Once you have created all your changes and you are now satisfied, you can save and close your company settings. I'm now going to move to under our banner bar we have the My Profile link, alternatively under Administration My Profile. The following window will appear. Under the My Details tab you have the option to change your administration email address by adding the email, clicking on the Change Email. A link will once again be sent out to the new email address. Once you've activated that link you would then have access to your sage one accounting package under your change password you have the option to change your password and under your preference option you have the option to view more than one row or more than a number of rows listed here in your transaction grid as well as in your list grid you also have the option to choose a default dashboard Remember, My Profile link is available under your banner bar, alternatively under Administration, My Profile. I'm now going to move to my home menu on the main menu bar. Your dashboard allows you to be able to view particular information from transacting in your company. My Business Online hosts five different dashboards being your customer dashboard, supplier dashboard, item dashboard, financial dashboard and your main dashboard being your company dashboard. On your main company dashboard you have your dashboard options that allows you to add widgets. You do so by checking as many of the widgets that you wish to load onto your dashboard and saving the changes for it to be refreshed. All your widgets have the option to be minimized 
If you're in a multi-user environment, please ensure that you refresh your widget on a regular basis in order for you to have the most updated information. You can also remove a widget by closing it at any time. We then offer settings per widget and you also have the option to be able to view your widgets in a display chart or in a display grid. If you choose to have your widget being viewed in a display grid, it will appear as follows granting you options to do particular transactions. Your dashboards also offer drill downs which allows you to zoom in to particular information that can be viewed on your dashboard. We have reached the end of the webinar and I do hope a lot was taken in.